Hello and welcome to News Click. The floods in Delhi have receded, but the problems of Delhi are most likely to return unless there are some systemic changes made. Today, we're going to talk to architect, heritage conservationist, town planner, AGK Menon about how Delhi's problems arose, what's wrong with the way we look at our master plan, and what is the way out, if any. Mr. Menon, thanks very much for joining NewsClick for this discussion. The Delhi floods have, are they going to be a moment of awakening for our city planners, for people who actually make the decisions for us? Because this was a very terrible experience for a very large part of the city. Well, I think it's not the first time we have been flooded. Yes. Maybe we've been flooded excessively this time. Yes. But we've experienced floods before. And you heard about the 1978 flood. That was also a major flood. Did we learn anything from 1978? Will we learn anything from 2023? So all I can answer is yes, we've had a terrible experience. But have we learned anything enough to make us change the way we are doing things? I don't know, I'm a bit skeptical. I'm at the end of my profession, professional life. And all I can say is that I don't know whether our profession will learn the lessons to do something in a positive way, which will require something like a revolution in planning, a revolution in the way we imagine cities. Because without that kind of revolution, the problem will just go on and on and on. We'll do a bit of patchwork here, a bit of patchwork there, clean the drains and we'll say, oh yes, we solved the problem. Right. Same old drains, it'll again silt up, again it flood. And maybe in 2030 again, we'll be talking about the same things. Is it possible to reimagine a city which already exists, especially yes. a city like Delhi? It is possible to reimagine it, but it requires a lot of, again, if I might re reuse the word, revolutionary solutions. If a problem of flood exists, it's not merely a fact that water has accumulated. Okay. You've got to think about the fact that why did water accumulate? Right. One possibility is that we planned wrong. So then right. the question comes, why did we plan wrong? Then we, if you go step by step by step, we come up with many, many other questions, including are people listening to planners? Okay. If people are not listening to planners, we'll come down the line and say, well, we'll have floods. Right. Now, to listen to planners, what do we need? Maybe require a revolution. In other words, the administrator will have to listen to planners. The politician will have to listen to planners. Now, will the politician listen to planners? Will the administrator listen to planners? Is our culture, our culture or governance capable of making that revolutionary change in the way we govern. In other words, let the expert say something, let's listen to it and let's do something about it. Not tell the expert what to do. For example, today in Delhi, the politician is telling us what they want Delhi to be. The administrator is telling us, uh, uh, telling Delhi what is to be. And if tomorrow the problems, who will you blame? The planner, the administrator, the politician, who will you blame? Well, I don't know. Sometimes we hear the politicians say, we see the plans that they talk about being executed, but we don't really know whether there has been some planning behind it. When you see as an expert, do you see any planning in the work? Let me give you some uh, simple facts about the present situation. Right. We have a master plan of Delhi. Right. It's 62 and this being keep, keeps, keeps on getting updated. The master plan of Delhi very clearly said that, look, Delhi is a capital, it will attract people. Don't make it more attractive by having more jobs, more government jobs especially. Right. 1962 they said that. Today, what are we doing? This government is building more government jobs here. Centralizing it even more. You mean the Central Vista and the ministries Central around Central Vista it? is one example, but there are many others. Whether it is uh, uh, development, why is there more, uh, not more development elsewhere? Why is there so much money being spent in Delhi? Now, not that Delhi doesn't require that uh, kind of, of course it requires. But a politician and administrator will have to take a balanced view. And say that maybe, you know, again you talk about Central Vista, but talk about Central Vista. Okay. Why are we destroying to build? Take that uh, Ministry of External Affairs. It's five years old. We spent 300 crores building a purpose-made building for the Ministry of External Affairs could be destroyed. Or the IGNCA, new uh, development. Why is it being destroyed? 
or many other buildings. Could they have been refurbished? In other words, if you are a poor country, if you don't have resources, if, you, if Meerut requires money, if Nagpur requires money, if Chennai requires money, maybe a, a politician, administrator, someone should say, okay, now look, there are too many demands in our country. Right. We're too populated. We've got to dispute the population a bit more, uh, the resources a bit more. Right. Instead of saying, no, 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 we've got to make Delhi the uh, capital of the world. You know, spend more money, more money, more money, and make it much more attractive. And to make it more attractive, get rid of the old. So I'm saying with that kind of mindset, why would you not have floods? No, I'm not saying that Central Vista is the cause of floods. But I'm saying the mindset is the cause of floods. In, we knew in 1978 that uh, these are the problems. Right. We could have changed the uh, solution, have solutions, have engineers come and say, look, this is the way to do it. And they build drains, they build drains, the build drains don't work. So maybe we should be spending more money making sure that the drains work, etc., etc. So right. again, I'm trying to say that, look, it has to do with our governance, our uh, uh, agency you give to experts. You don't tell the expert what, what you want. You ask the expert what we need. But the dream which is shown through the media by the uh, people who govern, by the polit politicians, is that you're going to become like one of those beautiful cities in the world, according to them, Kyoto, I, London. I, I have no problem with that. Of course, I'd like my city to be that. But I'm also realistic. I'm saying that, look, I look around. Yeah. I see the rest of my world, uh, rest of the country, rest of the uh, people. Right. And say, well, what am I doing about them? I don't mind that, you know, each person should have a palace. Who am I to say each person should not have a palace? Right. Similarly, why should Delhi be the uh, capital of the world? Why can't I have more cities that are more equitably uh, developed? So when the vision is presented that we want to make Delhi to be the, the, uh, the most beautiful city in the world, why can't we say the similar thing about some uh, other place in uh, West Bengal or Tamil Nadu or Kerala or wherever, etc.? Would, would decentralizing, as they love to say, would, would it solve the problem of, say, flooding? This is the immediate flooding we had. Again, I'm saying that, yes, it's a, I told you it's a mindset problem, yes. decentralizing. Yes. Federalism. Again, politics comes into it. Yes. We are going anti-federal. We are becoming more central. So decisions are being made more centrally. Right. And so it follows. That it follows way. one after the other, the other. So again, I'm not making a simplistic one is to one correlation. But when I told you that we need a revolution of thinking, we need a revolution of thinking because at several levels we need to change. You can't change the drainage problem because you have a revolution and revolution in drainage solutions. But it has to uh, flow through to the highest level. And, and the most important reason why your city needs to work efficiently, even when there's a crisis like excess water, is, is because people depend on it. Just a few minutes earlier, you were telling me about what happened during the COVID-19 lockdown. In many of our cities, not just Delhi, that people left. Why did that strike you as odd? Everyone else thought, well, they're going home, it's fine. See, you get to the core of planning, urban planning, right. core of it. What's the purpose of urban planning? To make a beautiful city or to make a satisfying city? What would you prefer? Now, Satisfying. you and I, who are, who are well, uh, yeah. uh, you know, we have got jobs, you got, we have uh, good resources. We want a beautiful city. A poor person, what would they want? Where they can work uh, close to where they live. And uh, a, a good home, good place, etc., yeah. etc. Et now, look at the master plan. Look at what we are doing here. Obviously, we are building palaces for ourselves. Look around. So, the COVID was a good example because if I said, what, what's the purpose of planning? If the purpose of planning is to make a city feel like home. And at the moment of crisis, people fled the city. Would that correlation not be the planning failed? If the purpose of planning was to make people feel at home, and when a crisis strikes and you leave home, obviously it's a problem. So, I'm just saying, I'm making a simple uh, analysis that Town planning has failed. Architecture has failed. Governance has failed. Generally, as in, in, in shall we say, post-independence India, our purpose of planning, everything has been 
to be to, to be questioned once again. Take a simple thing about uh, uh, post independence India. What do we want to be like? We want to be like another, uh, a Western developed city, a Western developed nation. Whereas our resources, our problems were quite different. Most of our plan town planning ideas come from town planners and thinkers who thought about problems in the West and came up with urbanization solutions there. But we say, that, well, that's universal. It has to be said. So, it is not universal. Can you give me an example of uh, how that is actually playing out today? Uh, take a simple thing like our population problem. Okay. We've got humongous urbanization taking place. Today, if you're saying our cities are crowded, mm -hmm. if I told you that tomorrow is going to double the amount of crowding, right. because that's statistical. That's right. Means uh, the, uh, as we develop, as the economy develops, people are going to come to cities. So, cities are going to double. What are we doing about it planning-wise? Changing land use patterns and allowing construction. How, uh, how, how, how do we do it and what way we will do it? In other words, if you have one Delhi, maybe we will have two Delhis in another 50 years. Right. Now, the second Delhi, how is it going to be developed? The same way as this? With the drainage problem? With the same problem? With the same transport problem? With the same thing? Or what? So, when I told you that we are going to revolutionize thinking, we have to revolutionize thinking for this reason. Because the past thinking has not worked. It has worked for some of us, for you and me, maybe it has worked. So, interestingly, you also mentioned there are parts of the city of Delhi which did not flood and which are actually the older parts. The older parts. Take Shah Janabad, for example. Why is that? Because when they planned these old cities, you know, whether it was, you know, in the 1700, 1600, 1500, 1400, they selected the site very carefully okay. where there'd be proper drainage. Okay. It's not as though that Here's land, let's build. Uh -huh. You've got to first understand what is the, the ecology of that area. And based on the ecology of that area, you've got to develop it. Not by statistics, by numbers, by, by simple, uh, you know, uh, thing that you know, a road has to go from here to there. Today, when we talk about an Indian way of planning, obviously, there isn't one uniform Indian way of planning. But you know, it also becomes loaded in, in the sense of a majoritarian way of planning. Central West is perhaps one example of that. Um, is that. Is that going to be a risk going forward? Even if we reimagine there would be this yeah, risk. I, it's a good question. I can just sort of give you a simple answer. When a planner plans a city, they imagine a flat piece of land. Okay. Now, tell me one area in India where it's a flat piece of land, where there's nothing, it's empty. There are villages, there are ultra land, there's a monument, there's this, there's that all. You know, when Delhi was, when the master plan of Delhi was made, there were about 300 villages. There are horse cars, you know, green park, all these areas. There we got all these, what we call urban villages. Right. What happened? Where, where are the urban villages? They have all been made into, you know, uh, laldoras. Uh, yeah. In other words, they were gated and forgotten. Whereas, surely, it was not an empty piece of land. It was an inhabited piece of land. Yes. It had land which was productive. Yet the plan comes and says, no, 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 no. This is all going to be wiped out. We'll make, uh, you know, horse cars, green park, uh, you know, uh, jorbag and green golf links or whatever it is. And we just plan these uh, areas. Okay. Whereas, if it was as urbanization happened in the West, they'd always say, look, these people have rights. Let's respect their rights and build accordingly. But the villages had no rights when the Delhi was being planned. And so when I say that when we're going to double our population, will we give the people rights? Or will we say, no, no, we're just going to bulldoze them and get them out and uh, build? So again, coming back to a very urgent problem now, Poor people come to the city because they want jobs. Right. You don't give them land, you don't give them housing, they settle somewhere. At no cost to us, at the government, they not ask the government for any money. Right. And yet the government suddenly wakes up and says, but, oh, but we need that for development, get out. Or sometimes just for beautification. Well, beautification, what? You're, uh, it's ugly, we are the capital of the world, you, know, we, you can't have ugliness here. So I'm saying that this is no way to plan. 
And when you say, what's the solution? My, I, that's why I told you, it has to revolutionize the way of thinking. We've got to think, imagine that the people have rights, the cities, the, uh, the, the villages have rights, the, uh, you know, all these people have rights. And we've got to respect those things, not saying that, uh, you know, nothing can happen, they can be negotiated. Right. But we have to plan according to what is the reality. Reality is that we have a, a, a diverse population, diverse ecology, diverse environment, and we have to plan accordingly. But yet, we talk about planning as flat piece of land, which has to be... Like a map unfold on a table and then you draw what you imagine on it. So, uh, will that change? I don't know. As I said, I'm at the end of my career and uh, I not being able to make it. Now, if you ask me a question like that, I don't know if the next generation is going to manage that. Perhaps they'll only manage it when there is an absolute crisis, maybe another flood, another flood, more, more people, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, being homeless and dead and all that, then maybe some, something might happen. But will it change? Right now, for the people who come to Delhi to work here, they really don't seem to be finding a home here. Something or the other is pushing them out. See, you, you can't think of planning as an economic problem, as a statistical problem. It is a human problem. Now, are we designing a city with humanity and human beings in mind? There are numbers, of course. When they say that we've got to build for 10 million people, there are numbers. But who are these 10 million people? They're people with lives and jobs, you know, feelings and ideas and beliefs and all that. They're not merely just uh, mindless numbers, but yet planning is made as mindless numbers. You know, when the first master plan was made, it was for 5 million people. Then it was for 12 million people. The third master plan was for 22 million people. Now we're doing the fourth master plan. And they're saying, okay, now maybe the city will not grow that much, but it'll grow a bit more. Right. But uh, they're still talking in terms of numbers. Is there a unity in the planning uh, vision from 62 to 21? Well, the unity is that we have not learned lessons. The 1962 plan revealed a lot of flaws. Did we correct it in the second master plan? No, we did not. Can you refer to a couple of them? Well, a simple thing like, we didn't think of need for industry. At that time, it was thought of an administrative capital. Industries came up. So when the second master plan came, suddenly we said, oh, there are a lot of industrial areas. Yeah. What do we say? We say it's illegal. Get rid of them. Polluting. Polluting. Get rid of them. So if you had heard, learned lessons, you would have said, okay, we didn't think of these things. These industries came up because people needed jobs, people needed economy, people need to develop. Maybe we should plug them into the plan. In other words, change the master plan a bit more and make them legal and make them more uh, less polluting, make, make them more uh, amenable to uh, a better environmental uh, conditions. No, but what we did was, no, they went out against the plan. The plan is written in stone, and they went against it, so we've got to get rid of them, the stone has to remain. The plan has to remain. So it happened in the second master plan, it happened in the third master plan, it's happening in the fourth master plan. And I'll tell you the most egregious problem in the fourth master plan, which is 21 to 41. Our master plan has four levels of planning. The master plan, zonal plan, local area plan, and the local construction, okay. uh, the local plan. Now, local area plan is a very important thing. Right. This is the time when you say, okay, now look, we have developed so much, this is the thing. Now, let's look at the local area. Let's take uh, uh, any area, you know, horse cars or whatever it is. Here's a, what's the local area? We have, in, incidentally, in, in Delhi, we've got about 272 wards. Right. So we've got 272 local area plans. Each ward has that councillor. So the idea is that maybe a ward can be considered as a planning unit and say, well, what went right, what went wrong, how to correct it. Right. Okay, the wonderful idea. Right. We made mistakes in the past. Let's correct it in future. Okay. What did the fourth master plan say? Fourth master plan says, get rid of local area plans. Can you think of a more egregious uh, 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 suggestion than that? But this is what the fourth master plan is saying. That we are not going to have local area plans. Because what was done in the master plan, what was in the zonal plan, perfectly already written in stone, it has to remain. 
So when you say, will we learn lessons? I'm saying, where am I going to learn lessons? Okay. This is actually very puzzling because when you talk about a uh, local area plan, which is a ward level plan, you're talking about a different kind of You talk about human beings. Yeah. You, people have lived there. They've got histories there. They've got people have grown up there. They know what the problem is. Right. And they, you tell them, well, let's find a solution. Is that planning? Isn't that more satisfying? Is that, maybe it'll be beautiful, maybe not be beautiful, but it'll be satisfying. It'll make people happy. So if they say, look, this is my area. Yeah, I'm getting flooding here. Yeah, I've got this problem there. Can we resolve it? But is that, that won't not? happen now. Because they said there's no local area plan because whatever the master plan said is law. What was the zonal plan saying is law. It's written in stone. Can't change. Okay, so, so Delhi, it will basically trundle on in this fashion. In this fashion, we'll go from crisis to crisis. Today, you're talking about the flood plan. Tomorrow, we'll talk about traffic problem because we centralize everything in Central Vista. Now, traffic problem will start and maybe 10 years from now, someone like you will come and interview a plan and say, well, what do we do about the traffic problem? And we'll say, look, we are sitting at the beginning of the traffic problem. What's going to happen? So, these are the uh, issues. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope that people watch and uh, learn and start to maybe oh, put pressure on the government to... That's the only way it will happen. If people understand planning, you know, one thing when this mass plan was going on, they tried to do a survey of people, citizens. Okay. And found out, do you know what a mass plan is? No, we don't know what it is. Do you know what the mass plan says? No, we don't know what it is. Majority. Not talking about 50%, 60%, 70%, 95% of the people didn't know what a mass plan, what it is. And yet, it's determining their lives, determining their uh, way of living. So if a mass plan is so incomprehensible, maybe it makes only sense in the local area plan. Because at that point, you know, there's my home, there's a school, there's a shop, there's parking. That's the only place where the plan really makes some sense. Right. And you get rid of it. Get rid of the possibility of solution. So this is the uh, the issue. Thanks, yeah. thanks very much again for joining us. Thank you very much for watching this video. We're going to keep an eye on how Delhi develops even in coming episodes. Thanks very much for watching again.